I'm sure by now you've heard a lot about the HDR video mode on the Mavic Air 2. In fact, I've talked quite a bit about it. In case you're interested, there's a whole bunch of videos about what it is and how it works and when to use them and not to use it. Links are down below in the description. But today I want to talk about the HDR photo mode, AEB, and it stands for auto exposure bracketing. So today I want to talk about what an HDR photo is and what camera settings you should choose on your DJI Mavic Air 2 in order to achieve these HDR photos. And then also we're going to talk a little bit about how to process these photos in an image processing software to create this classic HDR photo effect. I'll be using Affinity Photo, but you can use whatever other image editing software you would like. So let's take some HDR photos together. In case you don't know what HDR is. So HDR stands for high dynamic range. So in other words, the camera captures a higher range of information in the highlights and a higher range of information in the shadows and since it's called a range everything in between right but how does it do that so it actually takes a photo that's perfectly exposed for the sun and then another one that's perfectly exposed for everything that would be dark and then a couple of in between and then it merges them together and that's also why it's not really called hdr at least not on the mavic air 2 it's called aeb and it stands for auto exposure bracketing right so it brackets the different exposures and takes one with each exposure and then you end up with three photos or five photos at least these are the two options on the DJI Mavic Air 2 with more sophisticated cameras like the Panasonic GH5, you could like have seven or nine even and then merge those together. But five is definitely a good amount and you can get some really cool effects with that. I always like to explain things with examples. So let's just take a look at this photo that was not shot in HDR. And then if we take that very same photo with HDR, you can see the differences. Now, how do you actually shoot an HDR photo with your DJI Mavic Air 2? Well, luckily it's right around sunset. So what we wanna do first, you wanna go into your shooting mode just by tapping the button or above your shutter button to your photo modes up top and then all the way to not quite the bottom, but there you can see AEB. And if you press the AEB menu, you have the option to choose between three and five. So if we take, if we choose three, and then we hit the shutter button, you can hear that it took three photos. And then we're gonna do this one more time and we choose five. It takes five photos very quickly after one another and each of those photos will have a different exposure. Now, unlike the HDR video mode on the DJI Mavic Air, you are not going to get one perfect file that is ready to go. Instead, you're actually going to get now five different images that are all differently exposed and we have to do the HDR merge ourselves. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. Okay, so as mentioned before, I'm going to be using Affinity Photo. But again, you can probably use Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom or whatever other photo editing software you prefer. I just like Affinity Photo because it doesn't cost a lot of money and doesn't have a monthly subscription. Now, in Affinity Photo, you just want to go over to to file and the new HDR merge. You, know, you can't really see that because my recording window is a little bit too small, but just under the file menu, you will see new HDR merge. And then in here you get this little dialogue and all you have to do is click the add button and then navigate to the photos that you have just taken. But before we do that, I just wanna show you the different photos that you actually get out of the camera. So you can see here these five photos are the different exposures from our last test and if we take a look at the last one you can see it's perfectly exposed for everything that would normally be dark and then we have a photo that's perfectly exposed for the sun and then we have a few photos that are kind of in between and what we're going to do with these photos 
we're gonna take them and we're importing them into our HDR merge of Affinity Photo. So I'm just gonna select one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna click open and then there's a few options here. So you can al already um, work on the noise reduction. I usually keep that as is. Mm, automatically remove ghosts. That means if you had like a car driving through your scene while you were shooting that photo or if you had a person walking and obviously you're taking five different photos. So in each photo, that person or that car is in a slightly different position. So that's creating like a ghosting effect. So you can tell Affinity Photo if you know that there's something that was moving in your frame to try to find it and automatically remove that for you. In our case, I don't think we have that problem so we can leave it unticked. And then you definitely want it to automatically align the images. And I always leave that to perspective. And then you just click OK. So what Affinity Photo now does for us, it creates the HDR merge, as you can see here, and then it automatically takes us to the tone mapping persona. In case you're not familiar with Affinity Photo, every, every part of their workspace is called a persona. So you have a develop persona and an export persona and also a tone map persona. And so this is what it's doing here. It's just tone mapping the picture for us. And even though we haven't even done anything yet, this is the initial result. So you can clearly see this is the, the classic HDR effect where we're pointing the camera right at the sun and we're seeing everything in the foreground too. So here I have purposely included um, the, um, the little wooden bar of my balcony here, which would normally be completely black because I'm pointing the camera at the sun. So if you compare this to the standard photo that I just took at the end, you can see here that the wooden bar of the balcony is much, much darker than how it comes out now. And that is exactly the HDR effect, right? Normally you would do this on something a little bit prettier than my wooden bar on the balcony, but I'm just trying to get the point across here, right? So then the beauty with Affinity Photo is you can just choose your, your different profiles here. So by, uh, by default, it has natural selected, but you can go over to detailed and with a lot of um, sunset nature photos, dramatic always gives a really cool look. As you go through the different presets, your values on the right change. So if I go from natural all the way to dramatic, you can see that the local contrast went all the way to 50. It increased the black point for me. If we go back to natural, you can see the saturation also goes back to zero. So you can either stick with one of the presets or you can tweak it a little bit from there. Just like with everything else in color grading, you can always overdo it. So this is a little bit too much and you can see that you're starting to introduce a lot of noise here. And again, in most cases, you probably wanna stick to what you already have and you may wanna make it a little bit more punchy just by introducing a curve or so but obviously very, very subtle. And then you click apply and that's basically all you need to do. After that, you can still head over to the develop persona and do some more tweaking there. But today I just wanted to show you how to get your five individual photos into Affinity Photo and start the HDR merge process so that you can start creating your own cool HDR photos. So I hope you learned something today. I hope you found this useful. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Click the little bell icon, then YouTube notifies you whenever I make a new video. And if there's anything else you would like to learn about how to edit your drone photos or anything else that I haven't already explained about HDR in this whole HDR series, just drop me a comment and let me know and I'd be happy to make a video about it. But for now, Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.